Football is so back, baby. It is so back. And the reason that it is back is because San Marino, San Marino, that's San Marino, like the one that gets made fun of for having the worst national team on the planet, produced a club that actually won a European contest. Now, I want to just drop in off the top. The Conference League, the third tier of European competition, was the best idea ever. The Conference League is just freaking awesome. It's given so many new countries and leagues the opportunity to aspire to a European group stage. Uh, if you've watched the main channel, my favorite video we've ever done, we went to the Faroe Islands to watch the first Faroese club that ever made it to a European group stage and was playing against Real for crying out loud in the Conference League and drew them in the Faroe Islands. I mean, giving these clubs the opportunity not only to gain money, but exposure in these sorts of competitions that they could never have dreamed of before. And that now extends all the way to the literal bottom of the footballing ladder in Europe because San Marino and a San Marinese club has managed to win in the Conference League. This is not even the only crazy thing that's happened. Football is back in general. The Champions League first qualifying round is now done. The Europa League first qualifying round is now done. And the Conference League first qualifying round is now done. If you have a summer where there are major international tournaments, football quite literally never stops. And that in itself is awesome. Now, the San, Marini, uh, the San Marino fan account was the one that tweeted this out so that I initially found out what was going on. San Marino also didn't beat a club from another like Mickey Mouse country. I mean, the, Bo the Belarusian League is certainly not the best and has definitely been on a bit of an island recently. Uh, but San Marino is obviously a nation that is significantly smaller with significantly fewer resources even at this time. In the first leg, Eastlock, the Belarusian team in this conference, League matchup did win 1 0. But it was the second leg where San Marinese club La Fiorita battled and battled and battled. And in the 87th minute, San Marino's club La Fiorita scored a goal to equalize the aggregate 1 to 1. And I'm going to be honest, La Fiorita was dropping some silky stuff on the Belarusians. Check out this play, dude. We've got this dude on the right, picks the ball up, absolutely barbecues the fullback and sets up a tap in for La Fiorita of San Marino. 1-1, 87th minute. And you know what that means? We were headed to penalties. Well, I mean, there was a whole extra time in which San Marino got three separate yellow cards in the final 11 minutes, but we'll just ignore that. And San Marino's club, La Fiorita, kind of dominated the penalty shootout. The Belarusian club missed two of its four penalties. San Marino's team converted four of five to win its first ever European match. La Fiorita just by itself was winless in all 26 of their previous European games before tonight. They are from the province of Monte Giardino with under a thousand inhabitants, according to the Sweeper, great podcast that uh, covers a lot of different stuff like this. And San Marino, even though their national team is still searching for that elusive and massive win, does have a winner in the Conference League that will be going on to the second round, an egg on the face of the Belarusians. But that was just the start of a round of absolutely insane results in the first qualifying round of all three of these competitions. Just in the Conference League, which is just so incredibly extensive, there's a club from Andorra that's advanced to the second round after blowing out Velez Mostar from Bosnia and Herzegovina. Inter Escaldes from Andorra is headed to the second round, so plenty of teams to root for. Faroese club Vikinger managed to beat their Latvian counterparts to advance to the second round, so it's not just Kaoi Klaksvik that is doing the damage for the Faroe Islands. A club from Gibraltar called Magpies managed an extra time win over Derry City from the Northern Ireland League, which means Gibraltar is sending a team into the second round of the Conference League competition. Stjarnan from the Icelandic League has beaten Linfield from the North Irish League, which just a really tough look for the North Irish League all the way around. A Maltese team named Floriana managed to beat another one of the San Marino clubs to get into the next round and Iceland sent a second team to the conference league second round bright oblique beating Tikfis from Macedonia if only Italy could do that they would be well and truly on their way and then of course there was the all United Kingdom matchup between Crusaders of Northern Ireland and Carnarvon Town of Wales. Now, if you know anything about the Welsh League, because you might watch my Twitch streams or something, the Welsh League is arguably just the worst top league in Europe. I mean, I, I'm including every other top league in that. 
They have one team called the New Saints that's professional. The rest of the top league is all semi-pro, including Carnarvon Town. And the first leg result of this tie was a Carnarvon Town win 2-0, which was an absolutely stunning result. And then they stretched it out to 3-0 in the first half with a goal from a guy named Mendez. But in the second half, Crusaders, which would be the betting favorite in this match, managed to turn out three consecutive goals to tie the match on aggregate, sending us into extra time where the Welsh team subbed in Evans and Williams, which is just about as on brand as you could possibly be, and an eventual penalty shootout. In this penalty shootout was not for the faint of heart. Crusaders went first, goal. Then Carnarvon Town, goal. Crusaders, goal. Carnarvon Town, Goal. Crusaders, goal. Carnarvon Town, goal. Crusaders, they scored. Uh, and then Carnarvon Town scored. And then Crusaders scored. And then Carnarvon Town scored. And then Crusaders scored. And then Carnarvon Town scored. And then Crusaders scored. And then Carnarvon Town scored. So that's three consecutive goals by Carnarvon Town in this penalty shootout. If they'd missed any of them, they would have been eliminated in heartbreaking fashion after pulling, nearly pulling off a stunner. And then in the eighth penalty, they missed. Crusaders missed. The problem is, then Carnarvon Town missed. <laughs> and so we go to the ninth penalty with it still level, both teams missing a penalty at exactly the wrong time. And Crusaders then misses again. Poor old Owens, ninth in the penalty lineup, never thinking that he would come up. And that brings us to the second consecutive Williams to take a penalty. This one being 35 year old Mark Williams. And don't worry, I've got it for you. That's what it's all about. I mean, how could you not love a competition that gives you moments like that? A small semi-pro club from Wales wins a penalty shootout against Crusaders from Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland having an absolutely shocking display in the Conference League, all things considered. And that little Welsh team will now take on the Polish Giants Legia Warsaw in the next round, which is just awesome. That is just so freaking cool. And we haven't even gotten to the Champions League yet. And I want to just say off the top, don't worry, Klocksvik, our heroes from last year that were the first ever European group stage team from the Faroe Islands, managed to beat Differdong from Luxembourg with a 2-0 win at home and a 0-0 in Luxembourg to advance to the second round. So there are two Faroese teams still playing in Europe, which is awesome. The champions of Slovakia, Slovan Bratislava, advanced the champions champions of Bulgaria, Ludogorets advanced, the champions of Moldova, Petro Club, not Sheriff Tiraspol, Petro Club, they advanced over the Kazakh champions, Bosnia and Herzegovina's champions won in penalties against Ignatia from Albania, and Latvia's champions are into the next round, another loss for Northern Ireland, getting blown out by the Latvian champions, a tough luck. But it was the other day of qualification that produced the real surprises, the champions of Andorra, yes, Andorra, are headed to the second round of Champions League qualification. If they get to one more round, they will at least end up in the Conference League group stage because of how the qualification structure works. UE Santa Coloma defeating the Kosovan side Balkani after Balkani won 2-1 in the first leg. Mr. Adetunji got a, a red for elbowing, which, you know, uh, like happens. And then a 92nd minute own goal put U.S. Santa Coloma on level terms. Then they scored an extra time and a man down for what must have felt like a year and a half. Balkani managed to score the equalizer. Then they missed their opening penalty, came back anyways, and missed the seventh penalty to lose. So the Andorran club is alive. The Lithuanian champions knocked out the Finnish champions. Panavejas is into the second round. The Belarusian champions are still alive. The Slovenian champions are alive. The Romanian champions, FCSB, survived. The Welsh champions, New Saints, that one professional team I was talking about, are into the second round. But then there were two matchups that just became beyond awesome. The first was a draw that you could only dream up in heaven in the first round of the Champions League qualifying. The champions of Gibraltar against the champions of Malta. Lincoln Red Imps are the best team in Gibraltar. They won the first leg 1-0, but in the second leg, 
some dude named Bent got a fifth minute red card and got sent off. But it took until the 89th minute for Hamrun to score the equalizer for Malta, and that tied the match up. Tons of substitutions, and all of a sudden we're headed to penalties, where Lincoln Red Imps is able to convert all five, sending Gibraltar's champions to the second qualifying round of the Champions League, which is just not a sentence you ever expected to hear. The same as the title of this video, like a San Marinese team actually managing to win a match against an, an actual opponent. But my favorite match of the first qualifying round, the Irish champions, Shamrock Rovers, against the Icelandic champions, Vikinger Reykjavik. It was nil-nil in the first leg, but coming to Dublin, Shamrock Rovers ripped it apart. They scored two goals in the first 20 minutes, but Vikinger Reykjavik, they wouldn't go away on the road, and Hansen scored in the 60th minute. But this was all building up to the most dramatic single moment in the entirety of the first qualifying round. Because with Shamrock Rovers up 2-1, well deep into added time, Vikinger Reykjavik was awarded a penalty. 2-1, if Vikinger Reykjavik scores, we're headed to extra time. If they don't, the match is quite literally over. Take it away, the greatest show on grass. Lotus. Leon being told to stay on his line. Such pressure here on Nikolai Hansen. This is to keep Vikinger in the competition. And he's missed he it! it. He's yeah. missed it! He's hit the upright. He went the other side. It's gone wide. And that's the last kick of the match. Rovers are through. 2 1 winners. Nikolai Hansen, the Vikinger captain, holds his head in his hands. What a horrible moment for him. How could you not love this? I feel like after every qualifying round, I'm going to sit down and make a video like this where we go over the most absurd results in goals and everything else. Which, speaking of absurd, I forgot to show you this. In a match in the, ch the conference league between Bravo and Kona's Key, uh, this happened. The goalkeeper for Bravo, on the road in Wales, just picks the ball up at midfield and just kind of keeps wandering forward and eventually has a pop that actually looks half decent before having to sprint all the way back down the field who knows what's going on but football is awesome and according to these qualifying rounds it quite literally doesn't sleep the joke's on football because neither do i